Hello, uh, just another uh, quick peek of the Salem County House Tour coming up on May 4th from 11 to 4. Um, we're going to have our clock shop open also. And this is the side of the house, the south side of the house, which is the oldest portion, which is reportedly 1669. It was a tavern located where the corner bar now stands, and it was moved here at a later date. But in the 1669 portion, we have our clock shop with over 250 clocks, tall clocks, mantel clocks, wall clocks, any kind of clocks, you name it. There are clocks here. Too many clocks. Too many clocks to wind all the time. But anyway, enough of that. We're, we're going to, uh, a lot of the clocks run in chronological order. We can take a quick peek here. Uh, 1669 is our oldest cased clock. It's a single hand. And if, for anyone that doesn't know, prior to 1700, Virtually no one knew what a minute was. The proletariat, the common person, had no idea what a, mo a minute was. You, had, you didn't have to be anywhere by the minute. If it rang by the hour, and, and at times the Dutch and even the French created a striking system that at the top of the hour, it would strike, say it's going to be 3 o'clock, would strike three times. Then two to three minutes after, it would strike three times again. So, oh, if you were in the field, you have your window open, which would be traditional to hear the time. You heard it strike, but you're not sure if you caught it in the beginning. You'd wait a few minutes and it would strike again for you. But again, here, brass dial, silver chapter ring, and one hand, just a single hand. And these are all 30 hour clocks. These are called English cottage clocks, so to speak. So we have about five of them. Some of the oldest clocks we have are the clocks on a mounted on a shelf. This is prior to the, uh, the casing of clocks. Um, we ran into a couple of difficulties here. We have actually three in the house dating from the late or the third quarter and fourth quarter of the uh, six, uh, 17th century rather. Um, the issue here is these clocks were the centerpiece of the house, the most important thing in the house, but they were unfortunately located around the fireplace where cooking was going on. You have molecules of greases and oils floating through the air would land into the mechanism and dirt would be an immediate attractive view. Just dirt would migrate to that. And within six months, sometimes a year, the clock would shut down, so it would have to constantly be cleaned. And the other issue we had with this kind of clock, clock this open type of clock, is this kind of creature right here on the floor. And they call these cats. So in the 18th century, cats were a great commodity because they kept the, rodent contr uh, the rodents under control. They kept rodents under control in ships, in the houses, in workplaces, so cats were essential. The problem is, again, with this open style clock, is that you had oils floating, dirtying it, shutting it down, and the cats would stop the pendulum. That's a problem. So then some furniture people got together back then and they said, let's case the clock. So what they did was they put a hood around the clock. That solved the oils and the greases floating through the air, but it did nothing for the cats to stop the pendulum. You know, actually, it's sometimes this cat starts the pendulum. Um, sometimes he's quite ornery, but I mean, he does it uh, when, the, when, the, when the clock runs out, he can start it himself. So anyway, so around 1700, clocks begin to be cased, okay? Basic cases at first, and then the cases became very ornate, marquetry embellished at times, carved. And eventually, cases followed the common furniture style of the day. Queen Anne, Chippendale, George I, II, III, William and Mary, etc. So it became a very utilitarian, very important scientific piece for the common man and became a high fashion item today. So down the aisle here, we have a whole series of clocks in chronological order, starting again with pre-1700 and coming up to some very high style clocks in mahogany with crotch veneers down the case. Coming here with, this is outside of Liverpool, England, with double columns, reverse painting on glass in the tympanum. As we got to the end of the of the 18th century, particularly in England, clocks got very big. They got tall, they got wide, but the crotch veneers, the inlays got more specific and ever more beautiful. So one tended to compensate for another as clocks started to wane in their interest. Smaller clocks became in vogue. But this is of particular interest if we can get into this. Uh, the person, the homeowner who commissioned this clock, 
typically would have had their a, a, a part of their home placed in this. This particular one has their dining room or their kitchen. And these are the people that had this clock built. So this is absolutely amazing. This is a Scottish tall case clock. So this clock is dating around 1796. And that is actually, they're, they're eating around their table. They actually have a cat, a dog, the child, their dinnerware, etc. We don't know who these people are, but we know that this is the way life was at that point in time. We have another timepiece here with some automata. It's an English clock, 1780s. Uh, when the seconds go, the seesaw rocks back and forth, and the windmill, every second, ticks around. And at the high hour, a man opens the door of the adjacent dwelling next to the windmill. One of our most important clocks here is a clock that was donated, or not donated, but it was given as a gift by Benjamin Franklin to the Montgolfier brothers for first in flight in 1783. And when you're here that day for the Salem County tour, we'll have a, a professor here, and he'll be he's speaking about the lore of, of the Franklin clock. It's a cherry tall case clock with the M carved very specifically. We can date back to the 11th arrondissement in Paris and to the Montgolfier brothers. It's a family crest of the Montgolfier brothers, and they were paper makers. They were paper making family for over 500 years in France. And it's surmounted by a, a three train movement, a quarter striking movement with an alarm. So a very high grade movement in the Franklin clock. And uh, this room we're standing in now would have been the dining room for the Indian Fur Trading Center slash tavern. Um, in the restoration of the house, we have found that in the wall here, framed out, was actually a drive-up window. A four-paned drive-up window. So the framing is in the wall. In what would have been the entry room, or the room with the large fireplace, we have a contingent here of lacquer chinoiserie English clocks. Black chinoiserie, tortoise chinoiserie, clocks with eyes that move in the as second hands go. In the same token, when they were making the chinoiserie clocks in England, they were doing it in Sweden. This is a clock from Stockholm with a very vibrant, bright, uh, gilt, parcel gilt notes to it. We also have from Thomas H. Bowen, a jeweler in Woodstown, a mid-19th century regulator clock in the corner. To round out, we have a few French antiques. We have a Panettiere Ensemble from France, uh, from Provence. Uh, Panettieres were very important because as I'm sure you know, King Louis XVI was, was bankrupting the country, him and Marie Antoinette, in that third quarter of the 18th century. All the riches and wealth came to the Chateau de Versailles, and they literally took everything out of Paris. And it was so difficult, the French people were starving, so this type of furniture was created. It's called a panetiere, and a panetiere was, the, the term is called bread guard, so you would actually roll your bread out here, put it in the bread trough, let it rise, bake it in the oven, and put it in here and lock it up because people would break into your house and actually kill you. They were starving for bread. So this item was bolted, but when the furniture makers got a hold of it, they embellished it with all kind of wonderful carving and spindle turnings, and, and they made it into a real iconic piece today. It's a very much a collector's piece. But anyway, we're going to cut it off then. You come uh, on the tour, and you can continue your tour. Thanks so much. We'll see you then.